am going to now flip my camera and share with all of you what I discovered at the Dollar Tree. Maybe you guys have already picked these up. I don't know. And um, this is what I picked up at Dollar, Dollar Tree. So a dollar and a quarter. And I want you to see how big this is. This is a carvable uh, styrofoam pumpkin. Okay. So it's dimensional all the way around. They have them in black although it's just black painted on the outside um, and they have them in orange with the green on the stem. Uh, I opted for the, the plain unfinished one because I wanted to do different things with it, but they do have all three of those colors. Okay. So what I did then was I took a knife and I cut it in half and lo and behold, it's hollow on the inside. So they're not solid styrofoam and that's actually good because it gives you something to hold on to when you're painting it. So I sliced it in half, okay? And then I created, I used one of our wood canvas, uh, frame canvases that is available on um, DonnaDewberryDesigns.com. This is a 10 by 10, I believe. And they're very inexpensive and they make great painting project canvases. This is, nine and a half. All right. Nine and a half by nine and a half. <laughs> anyway, so I cut it in half and I painted it up. All right. I used some color shift. I got color shift purple there. I got some color shift yellow. I did some one stroke leaves on it. I added some, um, I first painted it all orange and then I did some daffodil yellow and then did the color shift yellow over the top. Okay. And Let's see what other color I added in there. And then I came in with our new wonderful um, Glitterific Pop Golden Treasure is the color that I use. And look at that gorgeous glitter on there. <laughs> so $1.25 and guess what? When you cut them in half, now you got two, right? So you can do two different projects. And how much fun would this be with your grandkids or kids? Um, maybe on a day that they're off from school or home or whatever to be able to decorate their own pumpkin, right? Wouldn't that be fun? So then I took this, this canvas and believe it or not, this is purple in the background. It doesn't look like it on the camera, but when you combine purple and orange together, it makes a very dark brown. Did you know that? And so I just kind of had fun. I, I pulled this together really, really quick this afternoon. Um, uh, but I've got, um, the glitterific purple down here on the bottom. And then I added the gold glitterific pop over there. I got color shift yellow and green down here. And I went ahead and painted some one stroke leaves and things. I just laid my pumpkin in here and you can either trace around it if you need to, or just, I just held it right here and I painted around, did the leaves, right? You get it all done and then you um, hot glue or use like E6000 or something and you're going to glue that pumpkin right down to there. And then you've got this really cool dimensional um, painting that you can hang up, um, give to friends, put out front, whatever. And isn't that, it's really quick and easy and very simple to do. It costs you almost nothing, right? A buck and a quarter for this. And I'm not sure how much these frames are, but you could put it on anything if you wanted to, or just paint the pumpkins. That's fine. So I'm going to show with, share with you how to do something like this, but I decided because I had two different halves of, of a pumpkin and yes, I picked up five of them, <laughs> um, that I would do a fall look, right? So we've got a Halloween kind of look right here and you could do even more with this than I did. Um, but then I thought, wouldn't it be fun just to do a pretty fall background? So I'm going to share with you how I just real quick, how I did this. I painted the whole thing with a scruffy. All right. You can use a sponge. I don't like the wood for my sponge though, because it kind of tears it up. Um, but once you get the, the, um, paint on there, it does raise the grain. So you can come in and just do a real light sanding and it takes it right down very quickly. Okay, but the colors I used on this, I just did my big scruffy. And what's nice about that is it lets you shove into the corners and get into um, that and along the side of the wood. So pure orange up here. And then I came in with Pueblo in the middle and kind of uh, pounced in. <laughs> go big or go home. You got that right. 
pounced in some Pueblo back in here and then I tapped into half orange, half Pueblo or yellow, excuse me, half Pueblo and created, I'm just creating some different trees and scenery in the background real quick, 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 right? Then I came down with berry wine at the bottom, filled all that in and kind of pounced it up, double loaded berry wine and the Pueblo to come together, right? To get that ombre color to come together. And then to finish it off, I picked up some sap green and kind of tapped that in the corners. And then I took a flat and real quick pulled up some of that sap green to get some stems. So it's very, very simple. It took me like two minutes to do this whole thing. Okay. So that's what's fun about these is you can get them done. Fun little crafty projects that you can do with your kids or whatever. But what I wanted to share with you wasn't so much how to do this as it was to get this pumpkin. Um, and and get it to look pretty on here okay so that's what we're going to work on now so let's come down a little closer and i'm going to take this away for now and we'll bring it back in just a minute and let's get some colors out here okay so i'm going to put out of course some pure orange It'll be a pumpkin without a little bit of orange and we're going to put out some pueblo Okay, then I'm going to get some apple red and sap green. It's going to be for my leaves and stems. And along with that stem color, we're going to need um, some coffee latte and some burnt umber. Okay, so the first project was, you know, bright colors and, and Halloween colors. These are going to be more fall, um, a little bit more um, muted, and you could just have a lot of fun with these. And get out the glitter. You can get out, you know, the, the poof glitters and stuff like that, too. Okay, so we got a whole round table of different colors here. So I got wicker white, yellow ochre, burnt umber, coffee latte sap green, apple red, pure orange, and Pueblo. Okay, so, and then I'm going to put the, the glitterific pop out, but I'm going to get that later because it dries very quick and it's kind of runny, so I don't want it running all over my plate. All right, and then I'm going to have some medium out here. Whoops, come here, you. All right, so get a little medium. Okay. And I just had fun with the color shift. You can use the neons. You can do all kinds of different stuff. Okay. So let's get our big brush. All right. So I've got a three quarter flat here. We're going to get that damp. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and pick up um, the Pueblo. Let's back up just a little more so you can see. Pueblo and some pure orange oops there we go all right i'm going to switch brushes because this one is not operating nicely pardon me for a second let me reload that all right so pueblo and pure orange and I'm going to get a little bit of white into that pure orange just to brighten it up a little bit. Okay, so the easiest way I thought to do this would be if you line up your Pueblo with the inside of the segments and back and forth, maybe a little bit of medium. The styrofoam is going to soak this up, okay? So you can do just a plain double load like that and then come over here. There we go. And you can decide if you want to do all the way under. I'm going to avoid it right now because it's going to make it easier for me to hold on to tonight. But the other one I did paint the entire bottom because you can see it. Okay. So I'm putting the dark color inside the groove for the segment, flip the brush over and 
It's got a divider down the middle where they fused it together, but um, you could get creative with that and maybe do some sort of vine around it. Oh, that would be cute. Maybe that's what I'll do. All right, so we're going to work with that instead of make it a, a hindrance. All right, so I'm just flipping the brush and keeping that dark on the inside of those and see how that's turning out. And the texture of the um, styrofoam is actually making it look kind of cool. Right, you see all the little marks and stuff. So. Okay, so I'm just working my way across with the double load and then you just go back and forth because you want to work it into those grooves and it's, you know, not, it's kind of like a cork board as far as the surface of the styrofoam, right? Okay, so all the way around, really liking how this is coming out. Okay, now I used, I actually have a hot knife for styrofoam because we collect Department 56 Village pieces and my husband likes to get creative with the snow scenery in the background and stuff and we put it up for the holidays. So um, I used a hot knife, but because these are only this thick, you could use a um, like a box knife or something and that would work just fine too. All right, now I'm going to come across the top here. Yes, you need to get to the dollar and 25 cent store. <laughs> Not the Dollar Tree anymore, right? It is, but and that's okay. I think, you know, for this price, if you're going to get two pumpkins out of each one of these, um, that's a pretty good deal, I think. They're not real big but they're you know they're not like the big ones that you get the foam um carvable ones that they have at michael's or whatever but if you're just going to do a fun little craft and i like to be able to do different things with it so okay so i'm just going to bring this up i filled in the top and then i'm going to bring up those shade lines real quick It dries pretty fast because of the styrofoam. Okay, but it is still kind of wet. I think I can work with it. All right, now um, I'm gonna go ahead and clean that brush. And I'm gonna get a 16 now. And we're going to come and get our stem colors. And this is what I do when I paint glass. When I paint my wine glasses, because there's a little opening on the inside of this, just like a wine glass would have, you can just take your fingers and kind of spread them apart inside. Hold it like this with your fingers up inside of it, maybe. There we go. And apply some pressure. And it will keep it nice and steady in your hand. All right, so I'm double loading with the coffee latte and the burnt umber, and I've got a little white on the coffee latte edge here. And I'm just going to come right in here and do a little striping on the stem. Okay, and you can even go out a little bit if you want to. I don't know if you can see that real well, but so that it comes down into where the segments are. All right, you just kind of go out a little bit there and then there. At least then it kind of looks like the top of a pumpkin. All right, and you just kind of roughly stripe that on, okay? So I'm gonna let that sit and dry for a little bit. And I'm going to come look at my surface now. So where this is going to go, it's going to sit right in here. And so maybe it might look nice if I were to take 
a medium scruffy. And we're going to get some fall colors here. So, all right, so I'm going to pick up some yellow ochre and a little bit of brown. All right, I'm going to tap that off a little bit and I might get just a touch of medium. All right, tap that off a little bit. All right, so now I'm going to show you right in here. Let me push that out of the way. Okay, you can come right in to the background here and we're going to pounce or scrub. Oops, let's come down so you can see this a little better. All right, so I'm just going to real quick scrub in the shape of a tree. And this is what I want you to see. This is quick and easy, fast, fast, fast. Very simple to do. Okay, and then once you get that shape in there, then you can start to come in and add a little bit more, create the outward boundaries of it like that. Now I'm going to set that brush aside and I'm going to pick up my 16 and get my browns on it again. We're going to add a little trunk. Now the, the pumpkin's going to sit right here, but I don't know how far down it's going to go. And so I'm just going to come right up in here, right down in here, I should say, and very quickly We'll just take it all the way down because this could be scenery all by itself, right? Okay. And you're going to just wiggle it off to the sides. Maybe get a little bit of white on there so it shows up a little better. There we go. All right, so I'm just kind of sputtering, creating my branches. And I only do this for the main trunk and a few branches, okay? Because then you can come in with your script liner and add a few more, all right? And I want to make this just slightly wider. There we go. And here's the thing with trees. You want to have branches that cross each other, not all spraying away from each other, okay? So I'm going to pick up my script liner, and I'm going to get some inky. I got water, and I'm going to blend that with the burnt umber, okay? And I'm going to create some little branches with the tip of my brush. Okay. And then I'm going to pick up just a touch of white. All right, so this would look pretty on your hanging on your wall, or your front door. Um, give as a gift for somebody for Thanksgiving or just for the fall season. And when you make it all pretty, they're going to be wowed. Okay. Remember what I said to humble yourself. Think less about you, not less of you. All right, so just little white highlights on that. What did I say? Think about yourself less not less about yourself. That's right. Okay. So a nice pretty tree. Then we can come back to our scruffy and I can come get more of the yellow ochre and a little bit of white. Right? This was the background what I put in there and then we'll get some more of this brown, yellow ochre, and white, right? And we're going to come right in here 
You can tip back to get the brown, forward to get the light color, or you can use my awesome Let It Snow stencil that has those trees that I showed you, right? All right, so you're going to get all this tree in here. Leave spice, space between space, space between the um, branches, between the clusters of leaves. Tip back, tip forward, right? And you're going to get, because that pumpkin's going to go right in there. All right, so that's how you get a tree on there really, really quick. And then our pumpkin, darn close to dry, close enough I could pick it up right, is going to set right in there. So let's back up just a hair and we'll shove that over. So see, you don't even really see much of the trunk. I probably could have gone up even a little bit higher than that with it. There we go. Okay, but then now what we can do is work on our um, features of that. First of all, let me get that script liner out again. Right, and we can even, whoops, we can even pull, right, enlarge our tree. <laughs> okay, and then we could come back to our colors, the brown and ochre. Right, and you can tap some more, maybe even take it right up off the, the wood frame. Right over the edge there, and now you have a tree that fits better. I know, can't see the pretty tree, right. Okay, well, you know, sometimes best laid plans don't always work out. So, now what I want to do... is I'm going to decorate this midsection of this pumpkin and then we're going to put the glitter on, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and get, and I put out the, the green and red, but I'm not really feeling like I want to use those colors now. What I do want to do is get my, I've got an eight flat here, yep. And I'm going to get my brown. Yeah, we're going to get some brown and the ochre. And we're going to double load that eight flat with those colors. Maybe get a little bit of white on here. Okay, so I can pick this up now. So we have this center line down the pumpkin. The frame is not from Dollar Tree. It's from DonnaDewBerryDesigns.com. And it comes in lots of different sizes. All right, so I'm just going to do a real quick vine across the center of the pumpkin. Just real loose on the chisel edge of my brush. Yes, Belva, that's correct. You could do that, add that tree trunk up on the side. Um, I don't know, because it would still, the pumpkin would be um, kind of sticking out. So, come here, plate. I don't know if that would look right. You could try it. All right, so I've got a real quick vine on here with the yellow ochre and burnt amber and I'm just going to do a few branches that come down and up. Okay. Now what you can do, let's set this aside again, is you can start working with some different color leaves. So that's where maybe this, these um, reds and greens might come in. I can come and double load those two colors. Right, those are some pretty fall colors. And we'll just do some real quick 
leaves on here. Okay, and change up your colors. So I'm going to do a few of those. So this is sap and apple red. I like how you guys are getting creative with this idea. That's my whole point tonight was to help you find ways to do this. You can do lots of fun stuff with this. Maybe even some of that fun paste. Or I also thought I would break out my um, terracotta paints. Might look pretty cool in here too. Okay, so we've got these, these color leaves, and then I can just wipe off that brush, leave the colors that are in it, on it, come and get some pure orange side load on one side, get the brown on the green side. So now I've got the combination of those two colors plus whatever is in my brush. You can go with some Pueblo even if you wanted to, right? Maybe get a little bit of white, work that in. You don't want to do white with red because then you end up with pink. And pink's not really a fall color. Okay, so with this I want to put, if I do leaves with this, I want to put, you know, because that orange isn't going to show up that well. So I want to put the dark color on the outside. See there? Vines all by themselves and maybe some berries would look good too. Okay. So lots of options. Let me come and side load some white because I want these to show up pretty well. So I'm going to get some white on that orange. There we go. Okay. So... Do a few of those and get some more of that brown. And let's grab some Pueblo here. Okay. So this is kind of a tone on tone look with the, the Pueblo. Or like I said, you can turn the brush the other way and put the brown to the outside. Right. So that's kind of fun. Now you can go with the treasure gold. That would look pretty too. All right? Let's pull some of that out. Now what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to get my handle, my brush, and we're going to come in and do some dots. Just little berry clusters. So think of all the things you could do with this. Celebrate the season, decorate your holiday table. And I'll tell you, at the, the Dollar Tree, they also have those velvet pumpkins that everybody's going crazy for, for a buck twenty-five. They're not huge, but they're real pretty. And they come in like six different colors. So you know I picked up some of those too. Okay, so little clusters of berries. pretty on there. Now you might even come in with this brush. This is a six flat. Get some of this gold and you can do some pretty curls. Right. Yep. 
Need to go check out that Dollar Tree. I don't know if they have, what do they have in Canada, Belva? Do they have those there? Are they like loony trees? <laughs> Y'all know about the loonies and toonies in Canada, right? I'm not making fun. I'm saying that's the currency. They're $1 coins. They're called loonies. Yes, you have a dollar store. Awesome. Okay, so little bits of gold. That's going to spruce that right up. Right, and you could do that around the outside of the frame of this too. You could put a little bit of gold on the stem. That would be pretty. All right, you can come right up in here. Oops, let me get some brown back because I think I got a little overzealous and put a little too much. There we go. There. A little gold on the top. That look pretty? Lots more you could do. Now, the last thing I want to show you when I do this now is you can come in with this glitterific pop. This stuff is the newest thing. It's got big and little pieces of hexagonal, I think they are, shapes. And let me just show you how this is looking now on our piece. Okay, so this is where you would decide if you wanted to glitter it up. Or you know what, you could, if you wanted to see your pretty tree trunk, you could shift that. It does not have to be centered, right? And keep, um, you know, think of asymmetrical, right? Maybe it goes off center. Okay. So then you can take this glitterific pop and it comes out. I'm going to put it in a little cubby because it's kind of runny. There we go. And it doesn't come out of a squirt bottle. It comes out of a wide mouth. So you have to give a little twist so it doesn't spread all over. Okay, so you could take this, right, and you could come just across the top real quick with little bits so it's just sparse, right? You have to kind of wipe it and leave it. The clear part that looks milky will dry to clear, and it leaves behind these big chunks of glitter. Okay. So I'll show you on the other pumpkin what that looked like. Nice big pieces. Oops, careful. I just went right into my gold. You're better off waiting for everything to dry, but I don't have that time today and I don't want to get out my hair dryer. So get your hair dryer. Old, old hair dryers never get thrown away, right? We keep those for dry and paint so we can work faster or have fun faster. It's not work. It's fun, right? Maybe put a little bit on the stem. Okay. And then you would put that and you can take, like I said, hot glue, E6000, whatever, and put your pumpkin where you want it to go. You could come along the um, frame with some more of the um, treasure gold if you wanted to and you could do little um, like S curves here uh, like this and then they have a little hash in between see that right so you could do those little bits like that all right or you could just nest pretty little comma strokes together like this or just leave it the way it is. Another thing I like to do is I can um, take the, the glitter pop and you can just go right over just the frame part right and just add that there. 
So these framed canvases are available in lots of different sizes on Donna Dewberry uh, designs.com. That's our wood site. That's where you get my big pumpkin for the workshop also. Okay. Okay, see how pretty that comes on? More ideas for shows, you betcha, Miss Osley. <laughs> I'm here to give you more ideas. That's what my goal is. I want you guys to try this. So you could go all the way around with the, the Glitterific Pop and pretty this whole thing all up and then you could come back and do the gold after. I'm not going to try and go right over that because it's still wet. Okay. All right. And there you go. Fun little project. You get two halves of a pumpkin by cutting it in half with a craft knife or a hot knife, right? They come like this or they're black or they're um, orange with the green, right? And they're, they're carvable. You have to look, mine I found up on the top shelf in a big bin, they were hiding them. So, and then we use the Glitterific Pop that's available on onestroke.com. Yes, it would look great on a picket fence wood. You're right. So this was the one I did for the Halloween look for those of you who came on a little later. So I took one pumpkin and cut it in half. This is what the Glitterific Pop looks like when it dries. How cool is that? It's got a shine to it and there's all different sizes of those hexagons. Isn't it pretty? It's making my camera go crazy. So and I use color shift in the background in this. Got dark dioxys in purple and pure orange. And then you put your pumpkin right in there and you hot, hot glue that down or E6000.